Yo, hello, hello, welcome to the elephant in the room. My name is Aaron and in today's video I'm going to talk about Tromjaro again, how I make my videos, how to make backups and how you can customize it in the settings. So first, the little thing that I forgot to mention in the last video that I made about Tromjaro where I showed how you can install it on your own computer is that you have to restart the shell once you install it. But don't worry, this doesn't take much time at all, it is super easy. All you have to do is just press the Alt key and then F2 and then you type in R here and then you press Enter and that's it. So now the shell gets restarted and then um, you don't have to worry about anything anymore. So I think there's a little bug in a Unite extension and um, yeah, we don't know where this bug comes from, but maybe it also gets fixed in the future. So you don't um, have to even do that anymore. Another option would also be if you restart the computer, but I think, yeah, just restarting the shell is easier. Um, you can also check that out if you just go on the tromjaro.com website and then you just click on releases because for every release we also mention some things that might be important and things that we changed of course. So yeah, in the last releases um, we always wrote that side note. Basically on the first boot after the install the Unite extension doesn't load properly um, and therefore you have to press the Alt and F2 key and write R and press Enter. Another option would be, as I said, you can um, restart the computer or another option would be also if you just close Firefox and open it again. So then the other thing that I wanted to show you is how I record my videos. And I just recently um, came across OBS Studio, which is a super cool trade-free application that also Tio recommended to me. So it looks like this. Um, as you can see, I have um, like, that's how it looks like. I have a background image in here. Then I have two windows kind of. I have my webcam that you can see here and then a window where I can also show different things like for example I can switch to Firefox and then you can see the Firefox window. I can also just share my whole um, webcam like as you can see right here. But um, yeah I'm just loving this application because you can um, come up with everything that you want to do. I can also just um, add different things, like I can add uh, different audio inputs, I can add different images, I can add different scenes and screen captures, I can also add a text, I can just show it to you. I just press OK and now I can say Tromjaro is so cool and I can change the font a little bit, maybe let's just take Ubuntu and then the 28 as the font size and as you can see now I have this text here so that's what I love about OBS studio because it allows for so many things yeah and then all I do is just um, press start recording and that's it and now it's recording and then I just press stop recording and then I recorded my video of course, um, it took a little bit of time for me to get used to it, to figure out everything, how it works and also set up everything properly. Also, um, yeah, you have so many settings, so it can be a bit confusing in the beginning, but just give yourself a couple days time and then you will um, figure it out. It's just learning by doing. I can also show to you the other... Oh, <laughs> Let's just uh, remove this text. But I think like, <laughs> of course, from Jaro is so cool. Um, then, yeah, the other application that I used before OBS Studio was also trade free and was called Voco Screen. And this looks like um, this. So basically I have here uh, my settings and here my camera. Of course, now OBS Studio is using my camera. But um, yeah, you just select the proper camera, then you also select the microphone in here and then you just press start and that's it. So as you can see, this is like also super easy to use and 
that's what I used to use but um, yeah you might have seen the flickering on my screen and I think now with OBS Studio is better and also um, yeah I can change between the different um, setups the different environments like this so I'm just gonna use OBS Studio right now I'm just loving it and then once you recorded the video you need to edit it of course and for that I recommend you the trade free video editor called Caden Live um, because this one is easy to use well of course it if you have never edited a video before then of course it takes a bit time to figure everything out but maybe I can just show you the basics for now so if you open Caden Live, it looks like this and now you have to um, add the video if you want to edit it. I can um, yeah, just select this one, a short one, let's just take the intro video and you can just drag and drop as you saw. And now I just pull it here and then I have it in my um, file kind of and now I can just I can um, cut the clip and um, yeah, move it to wherever I want to. Um, I can also add some music if I just go on my music folder here and then I yeah, let's let's add this um, the main <laughs> the main title that comes um, in front of every video. Then I will insert an effect because otherwise it would be too um, loud, too noisy. So I just uh, inserted the keyframe, volume um, and now I can just um, go down with the volume in here. And I can also just uh, double click so you can see these little um, points. So there I have, I can set it up individually. So I can say let's keep this one pretty quiet as well but I can just um, lift it up here to zero decibel and then it goes it, be, it becomes louder then probably you should be able to hear that <laughs> and of course I can also then add images by the way the second option to add stuff is if you just click here and there you can add clips so videos or um, title clips where you can also, I can show it to you if I just go from Jaro is so awesome <laughs> and um, just create title and now I can put it in here or I can also put it above so now you should be able to see it in here so yeah that's how you can add text for example you can also let it fade, like if you just um, like put this here, if you, I think, yeah, you can see there are those options. So now with this option, it will slowly wipe in and slowly wipe out, but I would recommend you to go to track compositing and then go to preview because then um, the quality is not on maximum, so it is less uh, work for your computer. So the um, preview might be a bit more um, smooth as you can see now the text is slowly coming in and then slowly wiping off so that's super cool so I can also just um, add this image in here of course I can also extend it I can also click just here on wipe and this one should fade out and now it looks like this so the text is coming in here and then it's wiping out and now the image is coming here so and then another thing that I can do is if I want to slowly zoom into the image so that it moves a little bit um, I think that's a super cool effect I can just um, like insert an effect and click on transform and there I have to select the last keyframe so in the end where I want to have it to zoom in I just have to press the plus so add keyframe and now I go on to size I say 115 percent I click on enter and as you can see that how it looks like in the end and now it will slowly zoom into the uh, picture 
I think that's a super cool effect. And of course I can also, like if I switch to the last keyframe, I click it here, I can also take the image and like pull it like this. And now it will um, zoom in into one direction. So yeah, as you can see, you can do quite a bit with only the basics kind of. And um, yeah, of course there are so many more settings in Kaden Life. Like it's really crazy if you consider all the effects that you can apply and the, um, the color like correction and all that. Um, so there's a lot of different features. But I think that's also good because if you want to um, get into that, then um, I think Caden Life has plenty of, um, of opportunities for you. And um, yeah, then if you have a video done, kind of, let's just show that to you as well. Like, let's say this is my clip. This is the video that I made. Then I just click on uh, render. But now, as you can see, the rendering is using low quality track compositing. And that's because of this little thing here. So we just click on high quality and press render. And now we can select the location where we want it to be. And also the um, file, like if we want to have an MP4 video or um, a WebM video and so on. So, and then you just click on render to file and then it's rendering. And of course, there are so many more videos showing different things on what you can do in Caden Life. So I would recommend you to just search online and there you can also explore a bunch of videos um, of people explaining different things about um, Caden Life. But yeah, I just wanted to show it to you because now you can also do videos by yourself. I mean, you have the trade free operating system, Chomjaro, and you have a video recording application that you can use also trade free and a video editor. So you can also make videos about our fucked up trade based society and um, yeah, talk about solutions, showcase trade free goods and services. So um, yeah, if you want to do it, you can just go for it. Because of course, like think about um, hundreds or thousands of people like talking about or making videos about our fucked up society and like talking about solutions, showing different trade-free goods and services. I mean, how cool would that be? Then um, the next thing I wanted to show you is backups. So basically we set it up that um, whenever there's an update for Tromjaro, it automatically creates a backup for the whole system kind of. We are using two different trade-free applications in order to do that. So one is time shift. That's what makes this automatic backup all the time. And um, the second one is Deja Dup. I can also show them to you in the applications. And there we have a backup folder and there you can see time shift and backups. And then another um, option to reach them is just if you click the CMD key if you have a Mac or the Windows key if you have a, another like a Windows computer but installed with Tromjaro then you can just um, type in time shift and then you can um, reach or open the application through that and now I just have to punch in the password and now the thing is that I uh, disabled these automatic uh, backups because my um, disk, like my hard drive, is uh, too small. Basically, I just have 120 gigabyte of storage and that's a bit tricky. So what I'm doing is I am backing up my system onto an, an external hard drive and that's how it looks like. Um, basically you can also change that in the settings like if you just go on to location and there you can see um, you can select your um, hard drive on your computer or now also the external hard drive that I have plugged in and as you can see here you can also schedule the backups and you can also select what exactly do you want to have to back up so um, as you can see here like everything is included like the whole system except my home folder so i can also show that to you so every basically every image every document that i have every music and every video that i have in my personal folder is not backed up but um, the whole system like Tromjaro and everything else 
and you can also select that here in the filters like root is included but my home folder is excluded and yeah if i want to create a backup i just click here on create and if i want to restore a backup i just select the backup that i want to restore and click on restore then i have to select where i want to restore it and just click on next and of course like usually you don't even have to open this menu because um, Chomjaro is backing up like or making backups automatically before every update because we are just saying that in case shit hits the fan like in case something um, breaks the system then you can uh, just restore it without um, any problems so I think that's a super useful feature and um, yeah I unfortunately I removed it but uh, I mean I'm making backups on my external hard drive and of course I would recommend that as well um, just to have different backups on, in different locations because in case one is like not working anymore then you can use the other location and if you make backups then on an external hard drive then always encrypt your hard drive that's also important one thing I forgot to mention when I talked about backups is um, that you can also disable this auto snap feature of Timeshift. So to make automatic backups before every update, you just go onto the software like add remove software and there you just search for Timeshift and then you can select here um, Timeshift auto snap remove. And of course, if you have it removed and you want to install it, you just um, select install and then apply. So this as a little side note. So the other application is called um, Deja Dup. Um, you can also just type in backups and then you will also find the one. And as you can see, it looks like this. So there you can also just go on preferences and then um, select the location where you want to um, store your backups then how long you want to keep them you can also um, schedule them like backing up them automatically and then you can also um, select which folders you want to have backed up and which ones to ignore so i think it's pretty straightforward um, just clicking backing up now and that's it and if you want to restore it it looks like this and you can select different um, dates basically you can go back in time and then yeah restore any folder any file um, from a couple days weeks or months ago so yeah these are super cool features super cool applications that we i also consider pretty important because of course if you work on an important project or so and then suddenly shit hits the fan then you always have a backup on um, different hard drives of course i'm also not using only one hard drive but another one as well just to make sure <laughs> it's always uh, good to to make sure then the next thing is Tromjaro settings and how you can customize it and there are basically three ways of um, changing settings and so on i will show all of them to you so Probably the deepest one is the Manjaro settings. If you just uh, type in Manjaro, then you can see here Manjaro settings because here you can select the kernel, for example. Um, you can also switch between different Linux kernels, um, remove and install the newest ones. Then you can also install several language packages if you want. Um, that might be also useful. You can create user accounts um, in here and also change the time and date and also change the keyboard settings that might be important as well like if you have different keyboard layouts you can just uh, change them here and then the last thing which might be also very important if you have for example a nvidia graphics card is that you uh, need several or different um, drivers for that so for the computer in order to use the graphics card and i think you can auto install um, open source drivers here and also you can like i think you can even install proprietary drivers from here and select them like which one should be applied um, i think you can change all of that here but since I don't have a NVIDIA graphics card, I don't know exactly about that. But I think that's where you can change that. 
Then the next option is settings in general. So you just um, don't go on Manjaro settings, but on settings in general. And there you can change uh, things like the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth, um, also your background. Um, as you can see, Tromjaro has so many cool, so many awesome backgrounds. I really love them. Um, so that's what you can do here. You can also, um, yeah, turn on notifications if you want. Um, you can change different settings in different applications. You can also um, like allow for the location um, in order to like for apps to access the locations or not. Who has access to the microphone and so on. You can change that in privacy. Then you can also change the sound and the power, how the battery should be used and how the brightness of the keyboard and so on is. Um, you can change the displays like different resolutions the mouse and the touchpad you can change the keyboard shortcuts color settings i've never used that one and as you can see you can also change region and language in here um, so yeah there are different uh, ways to change those things like as i explained either in manjaro settings or in here and um, yeah if one doesn't work you can use the other option but usually i think um, yeah, either way works, like both ways work. Um, also here you can create new users and um, change the date and time. So I think it's also pretty much um, straightforward. And now if you want to change the appearance, the look and customize Jomjaro as you want, then you just go on to tweaks. So maybe you have to like pull this window a little bit more open so that this tap bar comes into appearance and there you can select different um, things. Like for example, you can change the appearance, meaning uh, different styles. You can use materia. Now you can see it looks like this or you can also just change it to Vimix Ruby. It looks like this. You can change it to Vimix Light laptop amethyst <laughs> and it looks like this so you can see you can just customize it however you want to customize it you can also change the cursor if you want to have different um, cursors then you can also um, change the icons you can select mocha icons and now it looks like this as you can see all the icons have a different design and that's what I love about Linux in general. Like um, you can just make it look like however you want to make it look like. And now I was just thinking I can also show to you how you can make Tromjaro look like um, Mac OS. For example, if you really love that, then you just go on to articles on the Tromjaro.com website because there we um, explained it and also provided the things that you need in order to make Jumjaro look like macOS. And all you have to do now is you have to press here. So all the um, necessary like um, design packs get installed automatically as you can see here. And you just click apply, type in the password and now it gets installed. So as you can see, we can also install the Arc menu, but we will do that in a second. So first we just um, set up the macOS background image, if you will. We just click here, right click, set up as a desktop background, set desktop background. And now it looks like um, this so far. Then we, um, I think it installed, so perfect. We can close it here and now also install the Arc menu. Just type in the password again and it gets installed. You can also, of course, see the details here. So and now we have to apply the new style. We just go on to tweaks again and then enter. And here we can select now, um, yeah, as you can see, this window sometimes is a little bit, I don't know, is also a small bug but um, yeah just pull it a little bit bigger and now we can choose here um, Mojave, Mojave, I don't know how to pronounce it um, just the macOS style kind of 
then the cursor is i think we can just leave it and the icons is also mojave mojave i don't know <laughs> and um now we can also just um turn this one small and we just click here right click and just go to dash to dock settings and here we can select the bottom so now we have the dash to dock on the bottom and we can just um, unlock this or unclick this little thing so it doesn't extend to, to the whole screen edge and um, yeah so i mean <laughs> that's how it looks like and i think we also probably need to change the shell exactly to mojave light and i think this one looks pretty similar to mac os right um i think if you just yeah click here on the show applications then it looks like this and um i mean how cool is that so that's now the mac os style if you really like that and of course you can also um change to mojave dark and also let's change this one to mojave dark so um, it looks like this maybe that's a little bit cooler i think so and then we can also set up in the dash to dock settings that it should auto hide like the um, like the task bar or the dash to dock bar basically we can just um, disable this one here and now as you can see whenever i go down with the mouse i can access the dash to dock like it is in mac os so i think it feels pretty much the same like in mac os and i just love this thing about Trumjaro that you can customize it even to look like this for example so if you really like that you can um, of course do that as well and now if you want to um, switch back to it you just go to position left again then i click the panel mode to be extended and now i just go on uh, tweaks so what we got here and now i just go back to vmix dark doder there was the design the corso was the same the icons were zafiro and the shell was vmix dark um, doder as well so i mean yeah that's it basically as you can see it also goes super fast now we can also just change the background again because i rather have one of the Trumjaro wallpapers and it looks like it was before again so super simple super cool super easy if we then go back to tweaks we can also see that we can change the fonts like the font of the system we can also um, change the settings from the keyboard or the mouse um, how it should behave so that can also be useful we can set up some startup um, applications so whenever we like boot into Tromjaro when we um, like run our computer which applications should start like straight away we can change the top bar we can disable or enable the weekdays the date and the seconds as you wish you can set it up as you want um, we can change the window title bars behavior so like if i double click in here then it will maximize and of course i can also set up to different things and then um, another super cool feature that i would not want to miss i fucking love that thing is uh, workspaces if i click the cmd key of my um, keyboard from my macbook then i have four working spaces here and i can just um, change or swap between them if i just click them or i can also just use a key combination that i set up so i can just easily um, switch between those and i love that thing it is so useful and of course you can also as you can see now i have six working spaces so <laughs> that's up to you and i really love them it can be super useful because if you work on a project on one workspace and then you want to open the web browser then you can just like do so on another working space and then on the third one you maybe want to check your emails or another application so yeah it just gives you the freedom of doing that 
I really don't want to miss that thing. That is so useful and so important. So yeah, as you can see, these were the tweaks and I mean, you can just tweak Tromjaro and customize it as you want and I mean, that's so fucking cool. Another thing that I wanted to show you is how you can use the Bitmask application with which you can connect you to a trade-free VPN service. So basically we have it installed by default in Tromjaro, you just open Bitmask and then you need to create an account well you can consider this as a trade but of course you can um, type in any kind of username and so i would not consider this as a trade you just um, like connect yourself with calix.net because they are the one who are providing the um, vpn service so um, you just press next and then you need a username so let's say aaron just aron at calix.net and then in order to come up with a really good password I can show you the app that I'm using uh, it's called KeyPassXC and there I just type in the title for now Bitmask then the username is Aaron and add, I can just copy this one and then now with the password I can just simply uh, click here and now it creates like a super super strong password I have also multiple settings in here with some special keys and all that special characters and I can also set up the length so um, to make sure it is really really good and of course I would never be able to remember those passwords but that's why I recommend um, like a password manager like KeyPassXC and you just click apply password and now you can um, just copy it basically type it in here and as you can see it is pretty sure um, or pretty safe time to crack centuries <laughs> so that's good and you just click uh, sign up and then the username has been taken already but of course then you can just say Aaron one two three four five six <laughs> and sign up and now it should be able to connected so yeah now I'm connected as you can see you can come up with any kind of name and then turn it on and then um, you got a trade free VPN service so how cool is that and then one of the last um, things that I wanted to show you are the Firefox um, add-ons that we added to Firefox um, I talked a little bit about it in the last video about Tomjaro but I want to show um, to you how you can also add some more add-ons it is super easy, super straightforward. So here are like most of them we have installed by default. Some of them I also installed by myself. And um, as you can see, there are super useful things like Privacy Badger, which uh, displays you any trackers on the site or also you block origin. You can unlock scientific um, papers with Unpaywall or also with um, Sci-Hub. And we also had a Tromcast with the founder of um, Sci-Hub, the girl is called Alexandra. I can also recommend that um, Tromcast about it, which is super interesting. And then we have some more um, add-ons like the KeyPass X XC browser extension. That means whenever you um, basically have to log in to somewhere and the website is connected with KeyPass then you can you don't have to type it in manually but you can just select it um, and I think that's also super cool um, and yeah then also HTTPS everywhere so and yeah if you want to search now for uh, let's say ad blocker for example um, then you can um, see different results here and then you can also of course um, install them from here and then another thing are the extensions. If you just um, click on the GNOME logo here, kind of, there you can see the extensions that you have installed by um, default. And of course, you can also install the ones um, that you would want to have and also um, remove some um, extensions. So that's also up to you. Um, basically I think the more extensions you have the trickier it becomes because maybe one extension has not been updated or fucks things up so I think in general you can say the less um, extensions you have the more reliable safe and secure is the um, your operating system 
or the, I think it's the GNOME shell that you're using, the desktop environment actually. But um, yeah, so I think that was it for this video. I hope I, <laughs> I, hope I didn't forget anything. <laughs> and of course I forgot something, but it's just a tiny little thing. Like basically whenever you want to deinstall an application, it is as simple as just right clicking it. You go on show details and then you can remove it from there. You just select it, then apply, punch in the password and that's it. So just a tiny little thing. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it was pretty uh, detailed, like I explained a lot of things and if there are still some things unclear or things that you don't know exactly um, how to do or how to solve and just if you have some questions you can let me know in the comments. And the next video is, I don't know yet what I will um, talk about or what I will show, maybe another trade free good or service or so, but let's see. I'm just gonna say, as always, I look forward to the next video. See you then, take care and much love.